So, Marty and Tina, if you want to come, come ahead. As mentioned, uh, Marty and Tina Ganong are with us uh, today, and they're in the States here for the next few months. And I think they'll tell us a little bit more, but uh, their plan is to uh, maybe in July-ish, heading back to uh, Guinea, West Africa, where they'll uh, continue their ministry there. Um, but uh, just tell you a little bit about their family. So they have two daughters, Heather uh, is 26 and Laura is 23. They both live in Lansing, Michigan, and that's where uh, they're situated during their time in the States. Um, but Heather is uh, concluding some schooling uh, for her pro pro uh, profession that she's heading into, and, and uh, Laura is also just finishing school at Great Lakes Bible College, and uh, will be graduating this year as well, I guess. So, so that's exciting for them, on, onward, upward, as they say. Uh, but we're so, so grateful. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, so grateful for you guys uh, being with us and to carve out this time. Anybody that's worked with uh, missionaries who uh, go on furlough, come home, uh, think that that's a rest period. That's usually not the case by any means. Uh, but hopefully you are going to get some time, some downtime here soon. We, we pray for that. Uh, but we look forward to hearing uh, what you have to share with us. And uh, welcome. So I'm going to give you the disclaimer first. Be prepared to hear two languages. Okay, I greet you. We thank God for your prayers. We pray that God's going to give you peace and help you in everything. Men, women, kids, and all your relatives. So today we're going to be looking in Acts chapters 14, uh, I'm sorry, 8 through 14. We're going to see right away in the book of Acts that Jesus' disciples spoke very well about him. They said, go. Give to everyone in the world my teachings. We're going to pull out three big principles that can help us when we're speaking to people. That are going to help us speak well to people about Jesus. We're going to see how these words can help us. We'll also, when we're working with Baga people. So that they can become disciples of Jesus. First, we need to start where people are. We need to explain to them how Jesus uh, fulfills what's in the Old Testament. Second, if possible, we need to work shoulder to shoulder with other believers. Finally, we need to pray when people and events oppose our work. Okay, first, we need to start where people are. What do they know about Holy Scriptures? 
The way that Philip, Peter, and Paul taught people, that helps us. Luke wrote lots of words in the book of Acts that, that tell us how um, they spoke to people about Jesus. So every time they would start with what people knew. Then they would recount to them Old Testament history. Every time these disciples taught, they would say what the Holy Spirit gave them to say. So Peter and Paul, they went to where the Jews prayed habitually. The Jews knew the old writings of God. They respected them as their own holy writings. So the disciples started by teaching from these holy scriptures. And then they would explain how Jesus uh, was spoken of in these scriptures. So we're going to see in Acts 8, Philip met an Ethiopian. This is the first time in the book of Acts. This is the first time in Acts we see the good news coming to an African. So Philip heard the Ethiopian man reading from the prophet Isaiah. He was a man that left his religion to follow the Jewish religion. So how can we do this principle with Baga people? We need to start by talking to them about the Moses books. Because Muslims know many things about the Moses books. So their name for them is the five books of Moses. Your name for them Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. The first five books of your Old Testament, that's called the Pentateuch. And by the grace of God and your support and prayers of the last 30 years, there it is. We're so excited. <laughs> yeah. And um, you all have a special connection because Mr. Mickler worked very hard helping us typeset this with his expertise. And we wanted you, you've already been hearing Baga, obviously, but we wanted you to hear from the Pentateuch in Baga. Mutchinkol, Israel. Mariki Kankosu, Sonak Bon, Soyone Mariki. Mubotr, Mariki Kanukam, Abukach Nyamfop. So here, O Israel, here Israel, uh, the Lord our God, alone is He alone is Lord. Love the Lord, Lord your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your force. So now that we have these first five books of the Old Testament and three Gospels, excluding John. Translated, and we're in a wonderful position because now 
we are able to partner with another mission, Bancha Bancha, we're able to partner with another mission called Faith Comes by Hearing. And they're helping us to do an audio recording of the Pentateuch and everything from the New Testament and the rest of the Old Testament passages we have translated. Now why that is so special is because it puts us in a position to produce the first Baga movie. So we're excited about that. The movie is called The Covenant. And we're gonna show you the trailer so you can get a feel for it. And basically, it's gonna be the same thing you see with Baga in place of English. Ezra arrived in Jerusalem in the fifth month of the seventh year of the king. He had begun his journey from Babylon on the first day of the first month, and he arrived in Jerusalem on the first day of the fifth month, for the gracious hand of his God was on him. The people came together as one before the water gate. They told Ezra, the teacher of the law, to bring out the book of the law of Moses. So on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women, and all who were able to understand. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. So, yeah, it's pretty exciting. So to give you just a little more information, um, Faith Comes by Hearing has already been in our village and selected readers. And once we get back, then we'll start working on that. As you noticed, it covers basically from Genesis uh, through, through the Old Testament. And then it points to Jesus by ending with genealogy from Matthew. And there were 14 generations from, uh, and then it goes from Adam to Christ. We're excited to have that opportunity to share those stories that are foundations of our, the, the foundation of our faith based on those stories uh, in their own heart language. When reading through the book of Acts, we tend to focus on the main characters, at least I do. Oftentimes, uh, those main characters are not alone though, but are working alongside other disciples. This is the second principle that we wanted to mention this morning, is we should work as a team with other disciples whenever possible. Acts 8 begins uh, describing the great persecution which broke out causing Christian believers to scatter uh, from Jerusalem to Judea and all over Samaria. 
Peter took believers with him from Joppa when he went to see Cornelius, we're told in Acts chapter 10. And in Acts chapter 11, it mentions that believers from Cyprus and Cyrene were going to Antioch, Barnabas, who goes to, and gets Paul and brings, with it, and brings him to Antioch and is joined by John Mark. So who are our partners? When we first went to work among the Baga, we were by ourselves and you helped pray with us. And we prayed 16 years until 2010 when God brought Kyle and Katie to us. Then you may remember that Katie died November 4th, 2022. But God has been faithful to give us some additional team members to fill that gap. So this is Carla and her beautiful girl, Jamie. Carla lives in Fond du Lac and she works remotely on our team. She's been to Guinea four times now in the last 10 years. And she and Carla, um, she and Jamie lived with us in 2022. All that to say, God used that experience for her to come alongside and join the team to help us finish the New Testament. Then Mayara, a young lady from Brazil, joined us last year. We went to Guinea about 30 years ago with the hope of translating the entire Bible for, for this people group. And for the last six, I'm 64 now, so we see we're not gonna be able to finish in our lifetime, but the last six years, we've been praying specifically for someone to come alongside us that can help us finish up the Old Testament portions of scripture that we have yet to translate. We were asking God to give us another translator, and uh, Mayara joined our team about a year and a half ago. She started to study Baga before she returned to Brazil for her home assignment, and she has just returned to Guinea in this last week. When we return to Guinea this summer, I'll work along beside her to help her focus on the Old Testament passages that she will help translate, and. Uh, especially the Psalms and the prophets she has in mind to do. Mayara uh, learns languages very quickly. She went to Senegal to learn French in 2022, and uh, she lived with an American missionary there, didn't know English. But in the year that she spent there in Senegal, she came out speaking both French and English. So we're excited that she's a quick language learner and she's already done a great job in Baga. So we've always worked with national African translators too. And I'm gonna tell you their names uh, using aliases for security reasons. Amara is Marty's age. He's worked with us 20 years. Alseni has worked with our team 10 years and Ramon three years. And these are men of peace. They love peace and um, we're, we're just very honored that they can be part of our team. What do we do when people and events oppose our work? Um, we pray, first of all, first thing. Throughout the books of Acts, we see that opposition did arise to the preaching of the gospel. Back in Jerusalem in chapter 12, we're told that Herod had James put to death and had jailed Peter. Verse 5 tells us of what, how the church responded. It says in chapter, in chapter 12, verse 5 of Acts, So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. We see it again later in chapter 16, when Paul and Silas were jailed in Philippi. We encounter them in chains, praying to God and singing hymns. So what is it that's opposing our work among Baga people? Well, first of all, translation is really hard. And if you went on Google Translate and you put in Baga, you would find nothing. It's not there. So um, that is one thing that's very difficult. The majority religion where we're serving is that of Muhammad. And we work in a third world country, so life is really hard. And a lot of amenities aren't there. 
So Amara, the translator that Smarty's age, has worked with us 20 years. And this is what he had to say about it after that amount of time. Each time that I act, each time a problem comes, I think, first of all, about God's word. Bien que je sois Even though I'm a Muslim, Mais la Bible que je lis. but it's the Bible I read. Ce qui est dans la Bible, what the Bible counsels, la I try to practice that. Et la qui a la and I always love people that are compassionate. Ça, What do we do when people or events oppose our work? We have to pray, as I said. Uh, Sydney's grandma told him when he was very young that he should never leave the mosque. And it was a deathbed promise. Promise me you will never leave the mosque. So there's a lot of social pressure um, on our co-translators and on everyone else in the community uh, not to follow our Lord. Translation is really hard to. Um, I don't know if you've looked at the Book of Romans lately. It's pretty packed. And <laughs> um, Alseni, our 10-year translator, was talking about Romans, and he said, Romans is making me tired. <laughs> He said, and there is so much information, and Paul's style is so concentrated, it's just making me tired. And Amara, um, the older translator, had this to say be about the different versions of the Bible that he has to consult. Because when we see in biblical books, there are different parts that don't have the same meaning. So when you look at one version of the Bible, you're going to understand one thing. But when you compare it to a different version of the Bible, you're going to understand a different thing. Just to interject, the gentleman look at at least two, if not three, versions in the French for Romans, and then Marty compares it against the Greek. So life in Guinea has been difficult over the years. Um, besides the, the spiritual um, uh, interruptions or uh, interference in, in the work, there's the physical things that also have been very difficult. Um, the, the internet hasn't worked very well. There's been lack of electricity. The village doesn't have any electricity or water, running water. Uh, gas and water uh, shortages handicap the country on several levels. Life expectancy there is very low. Um, people don't expect to live until age 60. We're, we're past that already. Um, it's just a, it's a hot tropical climate where there's a lot of sickness and disease, and that makes the work uh, go forward more slowly. So what do we do when we're faced with all of this situation? Well, the only answer is that we have to pray because there's no other thing to do but pray. And Ramon, the youngest translator, asked you to pray with him this blessing over the translation team in our work. And this is what we're asking God to give us the strength to continue just the end of the time. We ask for his grace. We ask for his goodness that, he, that it will accompany us and that God will send us more people to share this work with us so that we can transmit this message to the future generations. Thank you, God. And may he give us a 
in the future long lives. We are going to have a prayer time now because we've said that's the solution, so we're going to do it. Um, there are going to be some prayer requests that are coming up on the slide. And John? <laughs> I'd like, to, like you to remember these three things as we return to Guinea in July. We'll spend maybe the next year and a half or two years there before we return to the States to try and finish up the New Testament translation that I'm working on specifically. We hope to have the New Testament finished in five or six years. Um. Yes. You know, Marty, I was going to say, uh, I know that we all caught it too, but when you were speaking in the Baga language, you mispronounced a few words. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have a hard enough time dealing with English. You can go on, go on to BibleGateway.com and we can, we can list out about 30 different English translations. And it struck me that you have two individuals here who have devoted their entire vocational life, family life, to this effort. And when they got there, I uh, just confirmed this with you, uh, the Baba people didn't have their own written language. They didn't have a written language. And so they had to very, begin at the very beginning with this process and have devoted themselves for now 30 years and it'll be plus. But, you know, I, I take to heart Isaiah 55, verse 10, that when God's word goes out, he says, it will not return to me void. It will not come back empty, but it will accomplish everything that I've purposed for it to accomplish. So who knows, in terms of eternity, the investment you, you've made and that we've had a little part in, um, it's, it's, it's both inspiring and mind-boggling. Let's continue to pray. God for him to plant his word in that area. And uh, so I'm just going to open it up. I'll begin with a prayer, but then if you want to pray out loud for one of these prayer points, then please do. And we'll just work through. Father, I just want to thank you first for uh, Marty and Tina and their life, their commitment to you and their love for you. I want to pray over them and their health, their physical health, emotional health, spiritual health, as they've invested so uh, their heart and their life to this goal of bringing your word because your word brings um, the gospel. And I thank you for what, the, what work has been done and that you will bring to completion this good work that you began. I pray for their daughters as well here in the States and that you provide for them uh, in their lives and the path that you're directing them. Uh, we lift, right, lift up now uh, the first prayer point. And we thank you, God, for uh, this, this wonderful uh, gift of the first five books in the Old Testament in their own language. Someone want to pray. Lord, I am going to pray specifically for the translators and the need for more. So we thank you first for those that are there and have just been working tirelessly on um, this work and putting it, your scripture into a language that folks there can understand. And as I sat there and listened to all of the steps involved in that, mind-blowing and fascinating at the same time. And I even imagine the mental and spiritual fatigue that would set in in trying to do that work and how difficult it must be. So Lord, I pray that those who are already doing the work, Lord, that you would continue to give them the strength and endurance to do this day to day. And we're also hearing the need for more, for more help. So Lord, I pray that you would just raise up folks either um, internally already there who could help with this or bringing people from the outside in who are ready to learn. And obviously that learning process would take a long time before they could even begin the translation process, Lord. So pray that you would just be ready in the hearts of folks somewhere um, that would be ready and willing to step up and help out with this translation process. We know how uh, important it is to have 
have that word go out into the world to learn. I just pray that you would ready somebody um, and get them ready to come in and do this long time. And Father, I pray for the remainder of their home assignment. Um, I know full well that uh, home assignment is not is not a rest time. Um, there's so much travel and so much speaking, and I thank you that you have sustained them so far, and I pray that you will energize them for the rest of the time. But I also pray that you would give them uh, times of rest, times of just alone time um, with each other and time with, with the girls. Um, I pray, Father, that as they uh, speak at churches, that you would... Um, use their message to, to motivate people to, to pray for them, um, to give them their support, um, to um, even maybe go um, sometime. And so uh, we pray that they will be ready to return when that time comes. They'll be rested and fully supported. Well. Father, I pray for a measure of protection around this family and all who are working here. I pray that you would not allow our enemy to uh, interfere in any way. May you be a shield of faith to uh, Tina and Marty. Um, give them a confidence that nothing will touch them except what you allow. And I'm going to use for their growth and your glory. I pray, Father, that you move powerfully whether they are able to see it now or not, help them to have confidence that in all things you work for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose. Um, your hand is rested upon them already. Uh, grant them a boldness and confidence that comes from knowing you. All right, pray for this wonderful. Make sure that you uh, say hello to them on your way out today. Why don't you stand and I'll offer a benediction over you. But make sure that you introduce yourself and uh, thank them. It's just a good reminder, isn't it? Uh, it's an inspiring reminder, really, to me. Um, I'm going to officiate a funeral here as soon as you all leave. It's going to happen right here. But any time we come to those times, you know, uh, funerals and losses, uh, we're thinking of what does my life count for? What does it mean? What does it matter? 
you know, what really that we do matters. And uh, this just reminds me, you know, the investments that we make that outlive our lives. Uh, we may not see the immediate return, but God's word never returns empty. Lord, uh, I thank you that uh, you have you provide this blessing. That because of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, you bring us peace, you bring us the foundation of joy, and you bring us the confidence to come before you, our holy God, and know that we're embraced. And with that grace, fill us so that we might be dispensers of it with whomever and wherever we are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless you. You are good, you are good When there's nothing good in me You are love, you are love On display for all to see You are light, you are light When the darkness closes in You are hope, you are hope You have covered all my sins You are peace, you are peace When my fear is crippling You are true, you are true Even in my wandering You are joy, you are joy You're the reason that I sing You are life, you are life In you death has lost its sting